This is the second of our two-part discussion on the effect of demand and supply changes on equilibrium price and quantity. In part one we looked at the effect of a change in demand and separately the effect of a change in supply. This time we are looking at the effect of a simultaneous change in demand and a change in supply. The symbols that I will use are mm, the upward arrow up arrow for increase, down arrow for decrease. When we talk about the simultaneous change in demand and supply, there are four possible scenarios. An increase in demand together with an increase in supply, a decrease in demand together with an increase in supply, an increase in demand simultaneous with a decrease in supply, and the fourth scenario where demand and supply both decrease. Let's start with the first scenario, a simultaneous increase in demand and supply. Now over the years I have found that it is a lot easier to reason through the effect of each one first and then aggregate the effects of the two combined. So we are going to start out by again going over what happens to equilibrium price and quantity if demand increases and then we are going to look at what happens if supply increases then we are going to aggregate the two so let's begin when demand increases supply remaining the same the higher demand puts an upward pressure on price so we expect the equilibrium price to go up if this was the only thing that was happening now if you again want to go back and review part one of our discussion for changes one at a time, please pause this video and do that. If you have already gone over part one and understand how to track the effects of one factor at a time, then please continue. So to repeat, when demand increases, supply remaining the same, the higher demand puts an upward pressure on price, so equilibrium price is expected to increase. The higher demand is expected to result in more transactions in the market, so equilibrium quantity is expected to increase as well. Now let's look at what happens if nothing happens to demand but supply increases. So when supply increases, demand remaining the same, the higher supply puts a downward pressure on price. As a result of this alone, equilibrium price would be expected to go down. The higher demand, uh, the, oh, sorry, the higher supply is expected to result in more transactions. So this by itself is expected to result in higher equilibrium quantity. Now let's aggregate these two. So combined, what do we see? The upward pressure on price because of the higher demand counteracts the downward pressure on price because of the higher supply. As a result, the effect on equilibrium price is indeterminate. What will happen to equilibrium price, whether it will be higher than in the initial situation, whether it will be unchanged or whether it will actually be lower depends on the relative forces of demand and supply or the relative strengths of the demand and supply factors. So the effect on price is indeterminate. However, since the higher demand and the higher supply are both expected to result in more transactions in the market, they reinforce each other. As a result, we can say for sure that equilibrium quantity will definitely be higher in the new equilibrium compared to the original equilibrium. So make sure you see what I meant by aggregating the effects. The higher price, higher the upward pressure on equilibrium price from the higher demand and the downward pressure on equilibrium price from the higher supply counteract each other, they work against each other. Because of that, we do not know what the effect on equilibrium price will be. But we know for sure that when we aggregate these two, these reinforce each other, we know that equilibrium quantity will definitely be higher. Now I mentioned that the effect on price, on equilibrium price, depends on the relative strength of the demand and supply factors. Let us look at a diagrammatic illustration of what we mean by the effect on equilibrium price is indeterminate, but we know for sure that equilibrium quantity will be higher in the new equilibrium. 
this is the first of three diagrams that we will look at. In this diagram, the initial demand curve and the initial supply curve intersect at this point. This is the initial equilibrium price, P0 bar, initial equilibrium quantity, Q0 bar. Demand increases. This is reflected by the outward shift of the demand curve to the new demand curve in broken lines. Simultaneously, supply has increased. This is represented by the outward shift in the supply curve to this new supply curve in broken lines. The new supply curve and the new demand curve intersect at this point labeled equilibrium sub 1. Our new equilibrium price P1 bar as you can see is higher than P0 bar. Equilibrium quantity Q1 bar is greater than the initial equilibrium quantity Q0 bar. So in this situation we have uh, the final equilibrium price is higher, the final equilibrium quantity is higher as well. I'll draw your attention to something before we move on. Observe that the extent of shift in the demand curve is much higher than the extent of shift in the supply curve, which means the demand factor is stronger here. Because of the higher relative strength of the demand factor, equilibrium price has actually gone up compared to the initial equilibrium price. Let's look at another scenario. In this scenario, as you can see right away, the relative strengths of the demand factors and the supply factors are the same. Observe that the horizontal shift in the two curves is the same. Initial demand curve, initial supply curve intersect at the point equilibrium sub zero, initial equilibrium price P zero, initial equilibrium quantity Q zero. New demand curve, new supply curve intersect at the point equilibrium sub one, Equilibrium price is P1 bar. Observe it is the same as P0 bar. Equilibrium quantity Q1 bar is higher than Q0 bar. This is the summary here. Because the relative strengths of the demand and the supply factors were the same, therefore when they counteract each other, they actually exactly offset each other when it comes to their effect on the equilibrium price. Therefore, we find that the equilibrium price remains unchanged. We had already showed or discussed that the equilibrium quantity is expected to be higher. Logically, you can infer what we are going to see in the third diagram. New equilibrium price is actually less than the initial equilibrium price. Equilibrium quantity, of course, is higher. Here is our third scenario. This time, the supply factors are far stronger than the demand factors, and as a result, the downward pressure on price because of the higher supply more than offsets the upward pressure on price because of the higher demand. Your new equilibrium price P1 bar is actually less than the initial equilibrium price P0 bar. Equilibrium quantity of course is higher. So to summarize, when we see an increase in demand simultaneously with an increase in supply, the effect on equilibrium price is indeterminate. The new equilibrium price will be greater than the initial equilibrium price if the increase in demand in a relative sense is greater or stronger than the increase in supply. Equilibrium price will remain unchanged if the two forces are um, just as strong. They are proportionate to each other. The new equilibrium price will be less than the original equilibrium price if the relative strength of the supply factors is greater than the relative strength of the demand factors. Irrespective of relative strengths, higher demand together with higher supply is expected to result in more transactions in the market. We know for sure that equilibrium quantity will be higher. With that, see whether you can work out the other three scenarios. Check the answers when you are done. You may want to pause this video right now. Make sure you draw the diagrams yourself. You may want to go back to slide number three in this presentation where we talked about the other three scenarios for simultaneous change in demand and supply. If you're done, let's check this out. If you have a um, decrease in demand together with an increase in supply, 
then the lower demand together with the higher supply will make sure that the equilibrium price is lower. The lower demand puts a downward pressure on price, the higher supply puts a downward pressure on price as well. So you can say for sure that you will see a lower equilibrium price. The lower demand is expected to result in fewer transactions. The higher supply is expected to result in more transactions. These two counteract each other. Effect on quantity, on equilibrium quantity will be indeterminate. You have to draw the supporting graphs. You will again have three different scenarios. One in which you see that equilibrium quantity will actually be higher, one in which you can show that equilibrium quantity will be the same as before, and a third one in which you can show that equilibrium quantity is less than before. In any case, your equilibrium price will be lower. If you have an increase in demand together with a decrease in supply, I will let you check your work for each step. Combined, you can say for sure that equilibrium price will be higher. Effect on equilibrium quantity is indeterminate. If you have lower demand together with lower supply, you can say for sure that there will be low, fewer transactions, so equilibrium quantity will be lower. Effect on equilibrium price is indeterminate. Again, reminder, please remember to draw the diagrams. Make sure you see how these qualitative discussions show up in diagrammatic form.